Uh, next, we have Leonard Medlock. Leonard Medlock is currently product manager and staff writer for EdSurge, which is an independent information resource and community for everyone involved in educational technology. He's an engineer, designer, and education, education prov prov provocator, and has facilitated or coached dozens of worship workshops with partners such as the Stanford D School, Mount Vernon's Institute for Innovation, and High Tech High. In the summer of 2013, Leonard served as co-architect and designer in residence for the Expanded Success Initiative School Design Fellowship, a New York City Department of Education initiative applying design thinking in order to create new high school models for at-risk black and Latino males. Leonard currently spends his time at EdSurge empathizing and prototyping with school administrators to better support their EdTech decision-making process. He will be addressing the question, how should we prepare modern learners for their future? Help me welcome Leonard Medlock. So I've never had anyone read my bio like that. I definitely need to shorten it. It was I'm like, what? What is all this stuff? What? what? I don't know. What's going on? All right. And I also promise, fortunately, between Dr. Fagan, between Dr. Fagan and the four panelists before me, I think all of my major concepts are covered, so I'm definitely going to finish this in 10 minutes. I guarantee that. Um, so how should we prepare modern learners for the future? Well, frankly, I don't really know how to answer that question. A, I'm not the, I'm not the person you know, to tell you what you should do. I'm more of a what you could do kind of guy, so I don't really know what you should do. Um, and B, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I know I'm going to pay my taxes this year. I know the iPhone 8 is probably going to come out soon. I can, I can bet on that for sure. But I don't, I don't know what's going to go on. I really, <laughs> I really don't. Um, but um, since I'm here, and since you haven't booed me off the stage, I'm going to try to introduce the unofficial, slightly scientific, and completely unsanctioned two-step process to preparing modern learners for their future. <laughs> here we go. Step number one, acknowledge the high achiever fallacy. And the high achiever fallacy is something near and dear to me, and I want to try to illustrate it with a personal story um, on the way from the airport with Mary Murphy, I was telling her that my first um, big moment in education was when I was in second grade. And, you know, I do all my schoolwork. I'm a good student. I don't get a teacher any problems. I was a goody two-shoes. And I took the Iowa test of basic skills. And the way that my mother and father and teachers reacted to my great test scores, I was like, wow, I must be really smart. I didn't know I was this smart. This is awesome. Um, where we at. But, you know, and, and, and what happened is I started this pattern. I kind of started this, this journey where I knew that I could do it, pass a test very well and I knew that people would revere me for it. And so I started my high achiever story, um, went on to elementary school, another elementary school, and took the NWEA map test, knocked that out the park, went to uh, public schools in Dallas Independent School District, took the uh, TOS test, it's a now defunct state test. Um, that was easy peasy. Then I got to high school and it was AP tests and ACTs and SATs and PSATs and oh my God, please no more acronyms, please ACTs. Um, check, 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 check. All of those out of the park. Uh, and then an interesting thing happened. I, my senior year, I realized that I was the only person of all of my peers um, that was going to a really good university, if any university at all. And and that university was Duke University. And when I got to Duke, I realized that I wasn't nearly as high achieving as I thought I was. <laughs> and so, you know, the way I had to ease these tensions because I had to try to figure out how to move forward is to really think about or, or really acknowledge that my high achievement to date was, was really a, fa a fallacy. It was something that was created by high stakes testing and reinforced by my, my parents, my peers. And my, and my teachers. So, you know, the high achiever fallacy is just this notion of sorting and filtering and reinforcement that all of us are complicit in whether we want to be or not. Um, and it's not just high stakes testing. It can be community expectations. It can be peer pressure. It can be ed reform policy, policies. It can, it, there's so many things. But the, the basic idea is we, we reinforce these social norms on students, and we don't know it. Um, and that's why I'm sharing this personal story with you, because I didn't know until I had got two degrees and now I'm smart enough to realize I'm not that smart, you know? So it's pretty crazy. Anyway, this is kind of how the high achievers fallacy goes. 
you start off as a dreamer, right? You're a kid. For me, it was Legos. I'm pretty sure my grandma can call me right now and probably yell and scream because she stepped on the long lost Lego from 30 years ago. And I just built all kinds of Legos. I was a big dreamer. Um, and then that initial high stakes assessment happens, right? That was my ITBS moment. And all of a sudden, you start getting these, these, uh, these personas. You have Joe Blow, and that's like the cool kid, but if he would only conform a little bit, he could be really successful. Or you have the, the slacker crowd, and you know, the slackers, they're too lazy, they don't know what it takes to really be successful. And you have the, the, the dreamers, you know, the, the young boy or girl who has big dreams to be under the big lights, but no one really is, yeah, you're not gonna be anything, kid. Everyone's telling them that. Um, and then finally, you have the model student, oh, you really make my day less stressful, high achieving student, right? <laughs> right? Maybe they don't make your day less stressful, I don't know, right? So. You have this cycle, more and more continuous assessment, and what happens is, over time, there's a clear hierarchy. There's the students, or the people who are expected to do big things in life, and for everyone else, it's, you know, good luck. And um, you might be saying, so what, Leonard, that's life, dog eat dog world, it's a cold world out there. Actually, you're not saying that, because you're sitting here now, so I know that you, you actually care. But, if someone were to ask, I think you want to recognize or maybe you could explain that high achievement is a fallacy because it creates unreal expectations on students. And I can speak from the high achiever side of the, of the equation, but I'm sure those other personas would, would, uh, would say that as well. I want to show you a graph. I, like I said, it's highly, slightly unscientific. Um, so on the y-axis, we have perceived consequences of failure, and on the x-axis, we have old father time. And this is kind of how real life looks, right? You go on in life and you just, you know, got a good life and you're a kid and, and things are great and then you go to high school and high school sucks but it gets better in college and, and you're going and going and now you have like, oh, you have a wife or a, or a husband and you have kids and you got to pay the bills and oh, those, those are real consequences to failure right there. If you can't pay the, pay the bills, it's a problem. But this is what's going on, right? All of a sudden, the sixth grade math test is like paying rent. We have this really crazy expectation of students at a very young age that they must perform. And it really, really has bad social consequences. Again, I'm, like I said, I can sit here and tell you because I'm on the right end of the spectrum. But there are a lot of other students who are on the wrong end of the spectrum. So I know many of you are thinking, yeah, Leonard, I agree with you. Let's break the high achievers fallacy. And I'm saying, nope, don't break it. Just acknowledge it. Just acknowledge the high achievers fallacy. And the reason I think you should acknowledge it is because we are, school systems are very, very complex, and people have very, very strong ideas about what's right and wrong for students. And while we may be superheroes in our classroom or in our school buildings every day, we actually need to collaborate a little bit better if we actually want to break the, the uh, high achievers fallacy. So just acknowledge it, just acknowledge it. And the reason I want you to acknowledge it is because that's the first step before you can get to step two of the I gotta remember this, unofficial, highly scientific, completely unsanctioned two-step process to preparing modern learners for the future. Push for a return to empathy. Step two is push for a return to empathy. And I know um, this is my first time in Douglas County, so I don't want you to get upset with me. I'm gonna try to say this with as much love and compassion as I can. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have this is, like, this is what I think most school districts look like. And you know, there are 16,000 school districts in America, and I've been to about 30 of them, so this is like definitely how all school districts work. Um, <laughs> so, you have the student, right? Students in the classroom. Then you have the teachers and the parents, and they're, they're responsible for most of the practical education. And then you have principals and network administrators, and they're trying to, you know, cover their teachers' minds or make sure they have the resources to do what they need to do. And then you have uh, the central office folks, and they're kind of making sure that the buses are running and the meals are being delivered on time and everyone's compliant. And then finally you have state and local and federal government making all the rules and making everyone do all the other stuff I just named, right? So how do we push towards empathy? Maybe, just maybe, teachers and parents could start talking to one another and see what common ground that they have. Maybe, just maybe, Principals and network administrators can start talking to the community and understanding where their common interests lay and come together and try to actually collaborate and have great uh, town gown relationships instead of uh, restrictive ones. Maybe, just maybe, oh man, the central office folks are going to get mad at me now. Maybe, just maybe, the central office folks could support and not be 
just compliant uh, focused. And I got to say, I think you said it too, Jeff, I have never, ever, ever heard a superintendent say, yeah, I'll give you whatever you need to make this happen. So you should really, really appreciate that. And then, you know, finally, maybe, just maybe, all of the talking heads, all the politicians will recognize that everyone else is empathizing and use that for the next campaign. So maybe, maybe that'll happen. I don't know. Um, but the reason we want to push towards empathy is because ultimately what we want to do is have our students become dreamers again. And if, they're, if we're lucky, maybe at a young age they can continue to be dreamers. And I want to uh, leave you with a quote before I shut up. There's a Jeff Vandermeer quote, he's a English, or actually he's not English, I think he just wrote a lot of English books, but he's actually from Pennsylvania. Um, the quote goes, history has shown us all too often the consequences of dreaming poorly or not at all. And I want to bring up this quote because the question for you as educators, the challenge to you as educators is not how do you help your students dream more, not what do you do in the classroom to help your students dream more. We're going to talk about that a lot. I'll, I'll be doing the design thinking boot camp this week. But the real question for you is, can you just get out of the way? Can you get out of your own way? And, and that's what I want to leave you with, you know? It's a really difficult question to answer. I struggle with it every day myself. But the question is, can you get out of your own way? Thank you. <laughs>